the disastrous rollout of Obama, the website, the empty promises, the disappointing role, and now the sticker shock as people see higher premiums and lower coverage. The President of the United States boasted, boasted that he will circumvent our elected representatives to impose his will on the American people. Americans are disgusted as never before with Washington politics. And why would they? As a nation, we have strayed perilously far from where our founding fathers started us. On a variety of fronts, from the NSA to health care, the federal government is more intrusive into people's lives than ever before. Reckless spending and mounting debt threaten our future as a superpower, and the dysfunction in Washington has undermined our ability to respond effectively to the challenges that confront us as a nation. Think of how that congestion to our forefathers, who came together at a pivotal moment in history and worked through serious differences with guilt and hate, and gave us a constitution that has given us the greatest nation on earth and has stood the test of time. Since then, we've had many periods of divided government in our country, and the two sides have found ways to work together. Consider, for example, President Ronald Reagan. He faced the same situation that President Obama faces, a Congress controlled by the other party. Remember Tim O'Neill? Well, President Reagan found ways to work constructively and respectfully with a political officer to help move the country forward without the bitterness that permeates our politics today. But President Obama's ideological agenda to grow and expand government and to vilify anyone with opposing viewpoints has deepened the partisan divide and fueled a, fact, uh, a grassroots backlash. No issue illustrates that more clearly that ran through Obamacare on a party line vote. What a contrast to the way main Republicans handled the health insurance market that had seen years of skyrocketing premiums under the Democrats. Overregulation had left Maine's insurance market warped and broken, with many insurers pulling up stakes and leaving behind a less competitive, more costly health insurance market. Our Republican majority in Augusta met that issue head on. And when the bill came to the Senate, it appeared that we could face the possibility of a straight party line vote. I listened to and worked with a handful of Democrats who wanted to work with us constructively. As a result, Maine's health care law passed not on the party line, but a lopsided 24 to 10 with tripartisan support. The reforms we passed have brought young people back into the market allowed health insurance to be bought across state lines, guaranteed access for people with chronic illnesses, and it's working, with more small groups receiving great decreases, in fact, three times more in the first year alone. We did it while Washington has given us a case study on how to do it wrong. So people ask me, Kevin, why would you want to go down there? Well, here's the answer, because I believe our nation is in trouble. And the antidote to the dysfunction of Washington is the kind of leadership that I provided in the main Senate, and the kind of leadership that Senator Collins has provided in the United States Senate. I'm a Republican. I believe in fiscally responsible government. I believe in personal responsibility and personal freedom. I believe the government has a role to play to ensure that our elderly and our veterans and those with disability can live with dignity. But I know that when government tries to do too much, we undermine the very thing that makes America special. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe government does not always have the answer, and in fact, can sometimes be a problem. For the past eight and a half years, Karen and I have owned and operated our own small family business, the Mustard Bill and Eastport, founded by my great grandfather's brother, we understand firsthand every day the challenges of doing business here in the second district in a tough economy where we are providing jobs and health insurance in the part of Maine where they are solely needed. 
For four terms, I served in the Maine Senate, elected by the people of my district to represent them in a My Republican colleagues elected me to be their leader, where I led the effort that restored the Republican majority for the first time in 16 years. As president of the Senate, I led the Senate to pass it the largest tax cut in history in Maine, state employee pension reforms that reduced our debt by $1.7 billion, welfare reform, and reforms that rooted up corruption in the main term. I was the chief sponsor of Maine's new regulatory reform laws to lift the burden from small businesses. And I wrote a resolution that put the Maine legislature for the first time ever on record in support of a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution of the United States. And finally, I led by example. One of the first things I did as Senate President was to reduce my own staff budget in the Senate President's office by 22%, and led the effort to reduce the overall legislature's budget by 14%, $8.3 million. And I did it without the divisiveness and brokenness that we see in Washington today. That's the leadership I provided in Augusta. I would submit to you it is the kind of leadership we desperately need in Washington. As your Congressman, I'll continue to push for the balance of budget amendment. I will vote to replace Obamacare with the kind of common sense private sector reforms we passed in Maine. And I will work to give states more flexibility to decide for themselves what makes sense for welfare reform. I will continue my efforts to strengthen Maine's economy as I did in Augusta, to enact regulatory and tax reform, to encourage investment in small businesses private sector job creation. Last year, against an entrenched incumbent, in the worst Republican year since 1982, I set a record for winning the highest number of votes of any Republican in the second district race in 20 years. This year, with my service in Augusta, and fresh off that 2012 campaign, I've established my leadership credentials in a way that puts me in a strong position Turn the seat to the Republican Party. In November, a public opinion strategy is one of the most respected polling firms in the country, who polls from Governor LePage, from Rand Paul, and did the previous polling, conducted a poll of second district voters. And they found that I had a wide lead on the Republican Party. But more important, more important, they found that I'm the only Republican candidate who would go into the general election with an advantage over either of the Democrats. 15 points up on Emily Kane, 14 points up on Troy Jackson. Mainers are hungry, are hungry for someone who will work to combat the status quo and bring Maine common sense to Washington. I'm working hard to get that message out and to earn your support and support voters all across the second district so I can take that message to Washington where it really needs to be heard. I would be grateful for your help. I'd be grateful for your help in signing or circulating the petition, contributing to my campaign, and volunteering. Together, we will take this seat back, and we will restore common sense to Washington. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you.